take a look at Dawn of Ulos, a role-playing tale. Now, role-playing, uh, role-player, the game, establish a fantasy universe, and this takes place in that universe. I didn't know a lot about the game, but I'm going to be able to tell you about the game right now. This is essentially fantasy stock markets. I know, you probably weren't expecting that from the cover. Nobody was. Let's take a look at it, though. The board is made up of six very satisfyingly interconnecting tiles. I love how these fit together to build a set of random terrain. There are 10 different fantasy races. You're going to pick five of them to play the game with. Each person is going to take one of these like gods and all this stuff means nothing. It's just basically a player reference card. Everyone is the same. A player's turn is pretty straightforward. You're going to place a tile, take an action, and draw a tile. When you place a tile, you're going to place it on a board. You have these three tiles. They're all double-sided. You'll be drawing from them. And you must place it so it matches the terrain. So let's say I place these like this. Then, sometimes placing a tile will cause things to happen. In this case, I can establish a camp. So let's say goblins are in our game. And uh, the goblin leader piece looks like this. Each leader piece is made up of three tiles. The goblin leader piece happens to look like this. So I'm going to place it like this on those because there are now three tiles. These are starting tiles that are on the board. And I can fit him on there. From now on, whenever I add tiles that are next to this goblin, let's say I add these, I can increase the strength of that goblin. So if you look, each of these has two different types of terrain. Well, most of them do. One of them works with water. But this type of terrain, he has this in forests. So I added a forest, so that will increase the goblin's strength by one. And if there's ever multiple factions on the board and you connect their camps with tiles, then there will be a conflict. At the beginning of the game, you're going to have all the factions here on this board, and they're all considered lost because they're not established. As soon as camps have been established, they're going to be in the game. They start at lost, they'll be in the game, and as they increase in strength, you'll move them up like this. The first person to establish a camp will get a card, but as time goes by, at the end of every person's turn, one of the actions you can take, you can buy cards, or you can use an ability. When you buy cards, so let's say I want to buy goblin cards, you can buy up to three cards of anyone who's active. So if the orcs and the goblins were both active here, I could buy cards from either of them. If more factions are in play, I could buy up to three cards. The cost of the card is their strength underneath it. You're going to be paying using influence. This might look like coins. This is the deluxe version because it is. It's really just money. But anyway, they call it influence. You pay that and get the cards and add them to your hand. Later on, hopefully you'll be able to get rid of the cards, or at the end of the game, they're going to be worth more points. To use an ability, you're discarding one of these cards, and it says for every two goblins uh, of the strength that the goblins currently are at, a chosen opponent must reveal a random card, gain the spoils value, that's the bottom, of the strongest faction revealed. And there are some cards, characters that don't have a card that can be used, but can actually be used in combat. Combat is the most complex thing in the game. If two factions merge, the person who merges them decide who the attacker is. Everyone's going to be playing cards face down in front of them and revealing those cards. You can put down cards that are kind of a fake card that aren't one of the two factions just to pretend that you're doing more. There are some conflict abilities from some of the factions and whoever wins the faction basically gets rid of the opponent's faction and Everyone has to lose half the cards that they committed for both the winning and the losing factions. And then you'll just adjust the power and the winning one will go up based on what they've won. There's a little bit more involved, but basically it's just the same as a merger. There's a few other rules in the game. There are ways to get these tiles. You'll turn them over and they'll give you a special ability that you can use later on. If a faction gets all the way to the top, they're flipped to their legendary side. If you get two flipped to the legendary side, the game ends, or more likely if you run out of tiles, the game ends. At that point, you'll find the value of all your shares, I mean, sorry, cards you have of each of the factions, and add up the points plus the money that you got during the course of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. My first game of this, I went in, I didn't know much about it, I was setting it up, and I was reading all the terminology, and I was like, this, this feels like a choir, a very popular, you know, acquisition and merger type game. And I played it, and it really threw me off. The second time I went into this, I said everyone at the table, this is Fantasy Acquire. This is about money. And it still didn't go over well. And in my plays of this, I found myself to not being enjoying it. And I want to explain a little bit why. I think the production's fantastic. Thunderworks does a great job on that. Although, 
I think these not being painted actually hurts them, the little miniatures, because you're trying to figure out where stuff is sometimes, and remember what faction is which can be a little tricky. But there's, first of all, I think the theme works dramatically against the game. I don't think the Venn diagram of people who want to play a fantasy game and an economic stock game is that big. I'm actually a big fan of both those genres. I love fantasy games, I love economics, and I don't know that I need them to mix. And in fact, it just got confusing. There's battles, but there are mergers. There's influence, there's spoils and strength, but all that stuff is just referring to money and money amounts. And I found it to be consistently confusing. And in fact, we were just saying stuff like, give me three shares of orcs. That's, that's not that great. The second problem with the game is it feels very chaotic. The math in it is very tricky. If you look at the how the math goes up on the two numbers here, as you have cards, you dis when you discard cards, you're discarding them for the spoils. And there's a lot more little rules in the game. By the way, I don't think the rule book is very well written. It's okay written. I had to go through it multiple times. I was confused on the basic premises of the game, honestly, for a while. But I don't understand this math. It doesn't make sense to me. Most shares go up in value, and this goes up in value, but it's seven, eight, 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 nine, 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 ten. And so you make it go up a few, but it doesn't do much. And like many of these stock market games, as one of these gets bigger and bigger, it's hard to stop them. And if someone has a lot of shares of that, you can say, well, let's attack them with these smaller ones and make them waste their cards. But if their strength is already really high, they only have to discard a card or two to stop you. <sighs> I just really didn't like the game that much. I wanted to enjoy this more. I tend to like stock market games, but the theme kept obscuring what was going on. The putting the tiles out and stuff, was mishmashy, it felt messy, the fact that you have to put the tiles on top of very specific things. It felt like someone played a choir and said, I wanna make a fantasy version of that, and they did, and then they were like, let's add new rules. There's 10 factions, some of them, one of them's really mean, it blows tiles up, which lengthens the game and makes it unnecessarily in your face. And, I don't know, just it's just not one that I found myself to enjoy at all. So I'm giving it a five out of 10, that's Dawn of...